The giant redwoods here in Northern California are truly unmatched in terms of their size and their scope. But that wasn't always necessarily the case. In fact, up until about 120 years ago, the East Coast version of these redwoods, the American chestnut tree, could easily grow 100 to 150 feet in height. They were truly the backbone of the ecosystem, ranging from Maine all the way down to Florida. A blight in the early to mid-1900s took these beautiful trees to the brink of extinction. Luckily, there's a group in the Tennessee Valley trying to bring them back. You can see chestnuts all over the place. So, like there's some here at Reflection Riding occurring on the property. They're really all over the mountains. The problem is they can't grow old enough to flower and set fruit and reproduce on its own. So what they do is after a few years, generally before you know five years old, they're gonna get the blight and it's gonna be a fungal pathogen again that uh, attacks the cambium, which is the, the inner bark layer. Um, and it ends up girdling the tree and killing it, but it kills it before it can flower. The blight is a fungal pathogen that occurs naturally on Asian chestnuts. It evolved with the Chinese and Asian chestnut trees. But in 1904, when those Asian chestnuts were introduced into the Bronx Zoo, that fungus crossed onto the American chestnut and wiped out an estimated 4 billion trees on more than 200 million acres in North America. On top of that disaster, there was a campaign to log the chestnut wood prematurely to salvage any lumber possible. Some of those could have been potentially um, immune to the blight. That would have been really good genetics to have, like anything that kind of outlasted the original blight. That could be, you know, stuff you could breed off of. That could be what brings back the American chestnut. Groups like the American Chestnut Foundation are trying to reverse the catastrophic loss. So this actually right here is a hybrid chestnut. This particular tree is a back cross hybrid. Um, so it's part Chinese chestnut and part American chestnut. This is basically just plant breeding. We're trying to uh, integress genes from the Chinese chestnut that makes it resistant to the blight and put those genes in the American chestnut while taking out uh, the genes that are that we don't like about the Chinese chestnut. They have different forms. So the Chinese chestnut has a much more broader open shape to it where the American chestnut would have shot up like a rocket up in the forest. This is an effort that stretches all along the Appalachian range. The New York chapter I know is doing um, some GMO trees, which sounds very scary, but what they're doing is actually taking a gene from wheat and uh, that is that makes the tree immune to Cryphonectria, Cryphonectria parasitica, which is the blight, the fungal disease that causes blight. Um, so with this inserted wheat gene, they're actually immune. Um, they're 100% American besides that one little gene, and they're completely immune to the blight. There is a way that you can help these functionally extinct icons. If you see something, say something. Like if, if you find a chestnut out in the woods and it's actually got chestnuts on it, that's gold. And that should be sent to um, you know, a professional that can start breeding those. And there's a guy named Dr. Hill Craddock over at UTC who is responsible for leading the charge in our area uh, uh, for getting these American chestnuts. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing, Caroline. These trees were, I mean, they were iconic. They were the backbone mm -hmm. of the East Coast. And then, you know, when you introduce new species from other places, that's what happens. But they're doing good work. Uh, UTC, reflection writing in several of the places mm -hmm. along the Appalachian. And those sites just don't, don't get old. They're yeah. absolutely no, beautiful. No, yeah, absolutely beautiful. Hey,